In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to solve a system of equations using the elimination method. The goal here is to eliminate a variable. So let's take a look at this first example. So the first thing you really want to look at is to make sure that the system is lined up properly. You always want your x um, uh, terms, we'll say, to kind of uh, sit on top of one another, followed by your y terms. And then on the other side of the equal sign, you want your constants. So you really want it in that format in order to use the elimination method. Then the second thing you want to do is you want to look at the coefficients of the variables. And you want to see which ones look similar. Um, not necessarily the same, but similar. So in this example, you can see that negative 4x and 4x look pretty similar. If you have a situation that looks like this, that means that you can use this method. So pretend that this is like an equation right here. I'm going to use this, and I'm going to be looking at these two equations to either add or subtract them. So I want to ask myself, how could I eliminate negative 4 and 4? Would I eliminate them by adding or subtracting them? And in this case, it's going to be adding. So I'm going to go ahead and write a little plus sign. And I like to circle my plus sign just to kind of remind myself that that's the operation I'm using. So now let's look at this. Negative 4x plus 4x. Well, we know that gives us 0. So these terms are going to eliminate, which is our goal. Now, this is where the other piece, the, the, the real like solving part comes in. Look at the y's we actually have to add negative 5y to negative 7y. And we're, that's going to actually give us negative 12y. Equals, I'm going to bring my equal sign down. And then I have to do my constants. 11 plus negative 3, be really careful with your integer operations, that's going to equal negative 12. And you can see here, it eliminated the x, which was our, which was, was our goal here. I can finish this problem off by dividing both sides by negative 12. And that will give me that y is equal to 1. Now, we know that a solution to a system is a coordinate. So that is only the y coordinate of my solution. I have to go back and get the x. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could use the first equation or the second equation, whichever one looks easier for me to work with. But what I'm going to be doing is substituting my answer of y equals 1 back into one of those equations. I'm just going to go ahead and use that first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 4x minus 5 times 1, right? Because y is equal to 1 equals 11. And now I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this to get x by itself. And I might need a little bit of room here. That's okay. So I'm just going to kind of carry this up here. So negative 4x minus 5 is equal to 11. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides. Negative 4x is equal to 16. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. And that's going to give me x is equal to negative 4. And there's your x value. So there's the coordinate, negative 4, 1. That's the solution to my system. We know that this is uh, one solution, so it's consistent. I'm sorry, it has a solution, so it's consistent, and it has one solution, so it's independent. OK, let's try another one. Looking at this next one, we got to think, well, um, is everything lined up? We have the x, the y's, and the constants. That's great. But then we have to ask ourselves, do any of the coefficients of the variables look similar? And they do. The negative sixes look similar, and actually they're the same. When they're the same, we're actually going to have to use a different operation. We're going to have to use subtraction for this one. Now, see if you can hear me out here. Negative 6y minus negative 6y, doesn't that turn into a plus? If it turns into a plus, you're really taking negative 6 and adding 6, giving you 0. So we've eliminated it. But I also have to subtract the other terms. So 3x minus 4x gives me negative x. And then the right-hand side, negative 4 minus negative 4 is really plus 4, right? Which is equal to 1. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to give me x is equal to negative 1. 
and there is the x value in my solution. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that down. Now I've gotta go back into the problem and get the y. So again, I could use the first equation or the second, whichever one looks easier for you to use. I'm gonna go put it back in the first one. And I'm going to substitute a negative one in for the x variable. So we're using a little bit of the substitution method along with elimination. And I'm gonna go ahead and just simplify this down to solve for y. I'm gonna add three to both sides. And I got negative six y is equal to zero. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative six to give me that y is equal to zero. And there's my other part of the coordinate. So negative one zero is the solution to my system, which means that's the intersection point of these two graphs. It is consistent and it is independent. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about multiplication because it is a little bit harder. So look at this first one. <clears throat> we have our variables lined up. We have the x's, then the y's, and then the constants over on the right. And now let's look at the coefficients in front of the variables. Do you notice how they're not similar? The x coefficients are not similar and the y coefficients are not similar. Well, if they're not similar, we have to make them similar. So you can make the x's similar or the y's, it does not matter. Let's go ahead and I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna make the y's similar, why not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually multiply the bottom equation by three. I could also multiply it by negative three, it doesn't matter. But watch what that's actually gonna do. That's actually going to give me an equation that looks like this. Nine X minus three Y is equal to six. You see that? And watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to actually write the first equation right in here as well. So I'm gonna say negative X plus three Y is equal to 10. Now you can see that I have the y's and they're, they're able to be eliminated. So once you've done that multiplication, go ahead and use the skill of adding and subtracting to solve the problem. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add these together because adding them together will eliminate the y's. A positive three plus negative three gives us zero. So that's what we wanted. And let's look at the x's. Negative one plus nine gives me eight x and 10 plus six gives me 16. And I can easily divide by eight to give me x is equal to two. So there's my x variable. And then pick one of the equations to substitute it back into to get your y. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the second equation. And what I mean by second equation is literally the second equation that's in the system. So um, I could put it in the first or the second, it doesn't matter. 3 times 2 minus y is equal to 2. So 6 minus y is equal to 2. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Negative y equals negative 4 divided by negative 1. y is equal to 4. I'm running out of space a little bit. So the solution to the system is 2 comma 4. Consistent and independent. Now, in this first example, we multiplied one of the equations by a number. In this second one, we're actually going to have to multiply both the top equation and the bottom equation by a number to get the x's and y's the same. You can see, looking at our x's and y's, they're, they're not anywhere close to each other. And you can't just multiply one of the equations by a number in order to make them the same. So think about what you can multiply both equations by to get you a, a common uh, number. And I'm gonna go ahead and work with the x's. I'm going to make the x's both six. So in order to get the x six in the top, I have to multiply the top equation by two. In order to get the x in the bottom equation to six, I need to multiply it by three or negative three, it doesn't matter. Now, let's go ahead and, and do that math. So if I multiply the top equation by two, that's gonna leave me with six X minus 12 Y, oops, 
my pen stop working here, equals negative 24. The bottom equation, if I multiply everything by 3, that's going to leave me with negative 6x minus 15y is equal to negative 3. Now, I'm going to use my addition subtraction method to finish this off because you can see now that I've multiplied both equations by a number, my x's are the same. So let's go ahead and simplify this down. I'm going to go ahead and add these together. 6x plus negative 6x gives me 0. You see that? That's the goal of elimination is to eliminate. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the next ones. Negative 12 plus negative 15 gives us negative 27y. And then negative 24 plus negative 3 is negative 27. So I can simply just bring that down to give me y is equal to 1. So that's the y coordinate of my, my answer. Now, of course, just like before, go back and pick an equation and substitute your y equals 1 back into that equation. I'm going to go ahead and use the second one this time. So let me see where I'm going to write it here. Negative 2x minus 5 times 1 is equal to negative 1. Simplify it down. Add 5, solve our two-step equation here. Divide both sides by negative 2. x is equal to negative 2. And there you have your x-coordinate of your solution, which is consistent and independent. Okay, the last thing I want to show you with this elimination method is um, these next two. And you're going to see that they're going to be special case situations. So you probably know what they're going to look like. So let's go ahead and look at this. And we see that um, it's all lined up nicely. But the x's are not the same and the y's are not the same or similar. So we have to make them similar. So what kind of strikes me is... Um, I can see that I have 3 and 4 for my y coefficients. Let's go ahead and make them both 12. If I do that, I'm going to multiply my top equation by 4, and I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by 3. I think that'll work really nicely. So let's go ahead and multiply these across. I'm going to do um, distribute my 4 into my equation, giving me negative 36x. Actually. Let me go ahead and just move, scooch it over here. Negative 36x minus 12y is equal to 12. That's the first equation. And then my second equation is going to be negative 36x minus 12y is equal to 12. Hmm, you see what's happening here? Now, let's think here. Well, in this situation, I actually have x's and y's that are, that are similar. So let's continue the problem. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract these because negative 36x minus negative 36x is actually going to be plusing, which gives me 0. Same thing for the 12s. Negative 12 minus negative 12 gives me 0. So 0 on the left, and then, of course, 12 minus 12, 0 on the right. If you have a situation like this where you have uh, a number equals a number, then, of course, you have an answer of infinitely many solutions because um, these are the two, two lines that are exactly the same. And it might be hard to just look at the equations and realize that, but um, if you get to an answer like this, 0 equals 0, that means that you have an IMS. So since we have a solution, it is consistent, but this time, because there's many solutions, infinitely, an infinite number, it's going to be dependent. All right, and the last one I want to take a look at is this one. Now, the first thing I want you to look at is what I've been talking about all along. Do you notice how these two equations are not lined up? You want to make sure they're lined up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this first equation so that my x and y are together and my constants are on the right. So I'm going to say negative 6x minus 6y is equal to negative 4. I just rearranged them. Be sure that if you're rearranging over the equation, you change the sign of the term. Same thing over here. I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange them just like this. 
I didn't have to change any of the signs on this one because I didn't change it. I didn't move it across the equal sign. Okay, now ask yourself, what can I multiply by um, to make these numbers the same, these coefficients the same? And I'm thinking let's make them into 12 because six and four can both make 12. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by two and I'm gonna multiply the bottom equation um, by three. So let's go simplify that. That's gonna give us negative 12x minus 12y is equal to negative 12. Lots of 12s there. The second equation gives me negative 12x minus 12y equals negative 24. Do you see how this is, looks just a little bit different than the, the last one? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna subtract these. And when I subtract them, watch what happens. These are gonna cancel out, these are gonna cancel out, leaving me with zero. But then negative 12 minus negative 24 actually gives me 12. So in this case, you can see that these two numbers are not equal to each other, meaning that this is a no solution type of answer. And of course, this is inconsistent. All right, that brings us to the end of our lesson on solving, sub, um, solving systems of equations using the elimination method.